We are back with another edition of Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. I've got some takeaways from J.J. Piccolo's press conference, and one of those things really stuck out to me with Jordan Lyles. And lastly, do I have a lot of confidence in the Royals making some key moves? Well, I'm going to tell you about it all. Coming up next on Locked On Royals. You are Locked On Royals, your daily Kansas City Royals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I'm your host, Jack Johnson. You can follow me on Twitter at Johnny J underscore 15. That's at J O H N Y J underscore 1 5. And catch all of these podcasting episodes wherever you get your podcast. That can be YouTube, that can be Spotify, that can be Apple Podcast, Amazon Music. Just be sure to hit the follow button or you can subscribe. And for those podcasting apps, be sure to leave a review. We want to make this podcast as best as it can be. We want to build this thing up for opening day. 2024. So it it really takes all of us, and we discussed this a little bit in yesterday's podcasting episode, but I want to make this thing big for the Kansas City Royals. I want to make this big for you, the fans, you, the listeners. So that is very important in us building this thing up. If this is your first ever episode tuning in to Locked on Royals, well, of course, welcome in. We Always welcome new fans here, whether you're a Royals fan or just simply wanting to know more about the Kansas City Royals. Well, I would say that I am a lifelong Royals fan, as maybe you are. And now I work up here in Kansas City for Sports Radio 810 WHB. I spend a lot of time talking sports over the air, but I will say I thoroughly enjoy it when I get to just talk Royals baseball for 30 minutes or tweet about Royals baseball. And of course, you can always find me on my Twitter page, at J underscore 15. Well, it was a pretty big day for the Kansas City Royals because it was kind of their season in review with J.J. Piccolo and Matt Quatrero speaking to the media at Kauffman Stadium. And I really did think there were a lot of good things being said. I thought there were a lot of things that you can hang on to, hope for, And there's also some things you could be very pessimistic about. Uh, We're going to talk about a pessimistic thing that I at least uh, took the approach with and what J.J. Piccolo had to say about this rotation. But I will say there was a lot of transparency. There was a lot of honesty. And I, for one, can appreciate that from a general manager. I can appreciate that from ownership, from a manager. If you're honest with me, I'm not going to complain too much about what you say. And that goes for a positive thing or a negative thing. If J.J. Piccolo came out today and said, we're going to lose probably 90 plus games again next season, but we're going to try to build this thing up. We got to take it step by step. I would appreciate that more than saying you're going to compete and then losing 90 games. If you kind of can pick up what I'm putting down here. I just want transparency. I want to know what your goal is. I want to know what the plan for the offseason is. Of course, you can't always force your hand. You can't just show everything. You can't show all your deck of cards. You got to be quiet in some aspects, but at least for the path for this team, for the goal of the offseason, I wanted to see some transparency. I wanted to see the honesty. And I feel like we got that with J.J. Bacola today. Let's start it off with the first thing that I really enjoyed. And it was a, a question about contending in 2024. And he kind of jumped around the question to begin it and, and said, you know, I can't really, you know, put a good, I guess, answer to contending, but we want to win anywhere from 80 to 85 games. That's the goal and give fans a reason to be there in September. Now, on the surface, that sounds like lowballing it, right? You know, why is our goal not to make the postseason? Why is our goal to be 500 or slightly below 500? Well, think about it in this way. 
The American League Central produced 180 plus winner this year, and that was the division winner in the Minnesota Twins who snapped their long postseason drought of losing streaks. You know, 18 consecutive games, I think it was. The Central's wide open. I mean, Minnesota has been very good this year, and by very good, I mean AL Central good. Division's wide open. White Sox aren't very good anymore. Cleveland is now without Tito Francona. And the Detroit Tigers are probably the team with the second brightest future in this division behind Minnesota, but it's wide open. And so I like that J.J. Bacolo said, we're shooting for 80 to 85 wins. That will absolutely get fans of the ballpark in September. That would mean this team is competitive all year long. They are not out of the hunt in the American League Central. And I can appreciate putting kind of a number on it. I didn't want to hear J.J. say, well, we want to compete for a division title. What does that look like? How do you suppose you get there? You went 56 and 106. How are we getting 25 or 30 games better? That's my big question. I mean, if that is the goal, I tweeted this out. If that's the goal, you have to mean it. Because this current group can't win 80 games. The Royals haven't won 80 games since 2017. So you got to tell me how you get to that spot. And he mentioned, really going to try and add to this bullpen. We have to add to this rotation. We have to add a corner outfield bat. We need competition on the pitching side. We feel set about our infield, but we need far more competition in the outfield, especially corner outfield spots. I like hearing all of that. I like hearing where the priorities are. You know, I wanted to hear this bullpen needs a little bit of a facelift. You like James MacArthur. You like first half Carlos Hernandez. As for everybody else, it wouldn't shock me. If the majority of those guys are gone, if not all. You want to get better, bullpen's probably the way to go. You need to have guys that can lock down games late because this team had a lot of leads. I would say maybe not a lot of leads, but a chunk of games that they could have locked it down if they had a good bullpen. And they did not have a good bullpen. So that's one of the first things I really like. Put a number on it. 80 to 85 wins. How are we improving by nearly 30 games? Well, you got to spend. And if that's the goal, you got to mean it. You can't just say, oh, we're going to improve by 26 to 30 games because all these guys have another year under their belt. That's not the case here. You need to add talent that can get you to 80 or 85 wins. Like the Tigers did. Tigers added just enough talent to keep them hovering around the top of the central all year long. You want to be what the Tigers did this year? You want to get to that point? Got to spend a little bit of money. Now, it didn't work out for them with Javi Baez, and Eduardo Rodriguez looks like he's going to opt out of his contract, but they built a more competitive team. And that's what I think we all hope to see in Kansas City. The second thing I really found interesting is what he said about the goals this season said he wanted to see if Bobby Wood Jr. could be the long-term shortstop. He clearly showed that. Then he said number two was to see if Kyle Isbell could be an everyday center fielder. And he feels like he has. Now, he also followed it up with he's got to be more of a complete player. And I understand that aspect of it. I'm not as high on Kyle Isbell as maybe J.J. Piccolo is. But if you're going to have a guy that's that good defensively, he doesn't need to be fantastic offensively. He can be just average, and then you've got a valuable player there, probably a three-war player or a four-war player. I mean, it's just Michael A. Taylor, but left-handed. You get that from your center fielder, could do a lot worse. And he said the third thing is they wanted to evaluate a lot of their pitching, which they feel like they didn't really get done. They didn't see a lot of success. Now, they liked Cole Reagans, but Brady Singer took a step back. Jordan Lyles was atrocious. Daniel Lynch took a step back. Chris Bubich was hurt in his fourth start of the year. Brad Keller took a tremendous step back. A lot of things went wrong in the pitching side of things. And he really hammered that point in. That's a spot they're going to upgrade. But again, you have to show me. Don't just tell me. Don't just say you want to upgrade and then you go add Jordan Lyles again. I don't want any of that to happen. Now, I do have a little bit more faith at this front office, the different scouting director, and J.J. Bacolo having a couple of successes with Cole Reagans, MacArthur, and Nelson Velasquez. 
You're looking for the right guys now. But again, it's more of a show me, don't just tell me. And we'll see, certainly, with J.J. Bacolo. All right, we're not done talking about that press conference. Now we got to have a little bit more of the negative spin. And I'm going to give you my honest opinion of some words that J.J. Piccolo had about Jordan Lyles. That's coming up on Locked On Royals. You are tuned into Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. You can always follow me on Twitter at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. Before we go any further, let's give a shout out to one of today's title sponsors in Bird Dogs. Listen, bird dogs are are one of the most comfortable forms of shorts, sweatpants, and hats I have worn this year. Now, let me tell you, I wasn't 100% familiar with bird dogs until about a few months ago. And now they're pretty much the shorts I wear all the time. When they're clean, of course. But their white hat, their shorts, they are my go-to attire. I mean, they are so comfortable. And when you deal with the humidity in Kansas City all the time, they're the shorts that feel the best. I'm excited that here in Kansas City, it's going to be a little bit colder because now I can wear the sweatpants again. And I'm not going to melt because they're so comfortable. I'll wear them outside. I'll wear them in the house. I'll wear them out in public. I love bird dogs because of the most comfortable pair of clothes I have put on. And you need to get a pair of bird dogs today. You absolutely have to try a pair I mean, if you like what I say about the Royals, like what I say about bird dogs. They are so darn comfortable. So here's what you need to do. Go to birddogs.com slash slash locked on MLB or enter promo code locked on MLB at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. They promise you. It was a long day today, a long afternoon at Kauffman Stadium for J.J. Piccolo and Matt Quattrero answering a lot of questions. I believe it was about a a 40 to 45 minute presser and a lot of things were said. And I don't think J.J. Piccolo and Matt Quattrero are stupid. Now, I know you may chuckle hearing that. Some of you that are very anti-J.J. Piccolo, anti-Matt Quattrero, You chuckle at that, but let's be honest here. With the way the season went, what could they have said that would have made everybody happy? Nothing, because guys in that role just have different expectation from the fans, and it's tough to make everybody feel happy, and it's all sunshine and rainbows after losing 106 games. It's tough to. Now, there is one thing I can't really defend J.J. Piccolo on, and it came about Jordan Lyles, that they feel like there's three guys in this rotation and the other two are up for grabs. So it's Cole Reagans, Brady Singer, and Jordan Lyles. Jordan Lyles does not fit your future plan. Now, I've seen the debates on Twitter. I've gone back and forth. Some of you, and credit to you, you found the optimistic outlook on Jordan Lyles. Hey, he's not that bad as a fifth starter. He's not that bad in long relief. Why are we going to criticize Jordan Lyles so much when Brady Singer wasn't very good and Brad Keller wasn't good and Daniel Lynch wasn't good and you can make a case, all those guys had higher expectation. My point is, yes, those guys were bad. Yes, those guys make you very frustrated. But Jordan Lyles is kind of in a league of his own because Jordan Lyles was an expensive signing for this payroll. He's making eight and a half mil per year. And somebody signed off on this being a two-year deal for a guy that's never shown he is higher than a number four guy in the rotation. And for a bad Royals team, He needed to be an innings eater. Well, let me tell you something about being an innings eater. And I promise I'm not talking down on you. I'm not trying to sound smarter than you. To me, at least, it could be a different point of view from you. For me, an innings eater is not somebody that can go give you six innings but give up six or seven runs. That's not an innings eater. That's not a competitive pitcher. That's not keeping you in the game. You know how many starts this year 
Brady Singer could have gone out there and given you six innings and given up seven runs, a lot of them. But he just couldn't work that deep into games. Or maybe he's dealing with arm fatigue or the Royals didn't want to burn him out like that. Macrotro knew that it, it didn't matter too much to Jordan Lyles, you know, if he gave up a two runs or four runs, as long as he could eat innings for his team. Well, that's good for Jordan Lyles. He's been a good teammate, but he was 27th in innings pitched in baseball this year. If he's top 10, different story. If his ERA is not 6.28, different story. If he didn't break the franchise record in home runs allowed, different story. If he didn't lead the league in earned runs given up, different story. That, to me, is just not an innings eater. And that, to me, shouldn't be in the rotation in 2024. Because, though you may disagree with me, some of you that defended Jordan Lyles, I think you can do a lot better in 2024 for your fifth starter. I would like to see the Royals try and get a little better in that department. I don't want them to hang on to guys just because they expect to bounce back. Because we talked about this with J.J. Piccolo. He said, we have guys that can bounce back, but we're not counting on it anymore. Now, let me clarify. Just because he says we expect him to on October 3rd to be in the rotation, it doesn't mean he is going to be in the rotation. I, for one, was fully in agreeing to the point that in 2022, Mike Miner was going to be in that rotation again. And what happened? Shortly before spring training, the Royals traded Miner to the Reds for Amir Garrett, and they ate a chunk of that contract. Now, the Royals started to send money that way, but they got him off the books. And Mike Miner, I don't even believe, has pitched more than 10 innings for the Reds. Like, that could still happen this year. No, Oakland could come calling and say, you know, we need somebody just to eat innings for us, just like the Royals did with Lyles last year. It's possible is all I'm saying. And maybe I should reserve some of that frustration and go, okay, it's October 3rd. He's not going to say he's gone. But what I would have liked to hear instead of we expect him to be in the rotation is maybe just, you know what? Our rotation wasn't very good at all this year. We need to evaluate a lot of things. Leave it open-ended. That, to me, would at least signal we're trying a couple different things. We're not going into 2024 giving him a spot because that's where it gets tricky. If you do really expect him to be in the rotation, that means you're only looking for two pitchers in free agency. Or you're going to give one of those spots to Daniel Lynch. I mean, Alec Marsh is still out there. Serpa's going to keep, like, who are you going to actually go out there for? If you just want to spend all the money on the bullpen, okay, make sure it's a really good bullpen. But my thing is, if you really are shooting for an 80 to 85 win win total next year, that, that pace, explain to me how Jordan Lyles gets you there. Not with these numbers. How do you expect him to really bounce back? What's going to be different with him being a year older? I, I can't get on board with it. I really can't. And I thought a lot of what he said today, J.J. Bacol, that is, and Matt Quattrero, for that matter, said a lot of good things. That was one I kind of cocked my head at and said, can't get on board with you there. I I can't get on board with a a thought of Jordan Lyles being back in that rotation. That's going backwards to me. There are better options there. Listen, innings can be eaten by guys like Jordan Lyles. And if the Royals came out there and said, hey, you know, we need another evaluation here, cool. Give them that spot. That's where I'm at. If you're going to lose 100 games again, give them that spot. Let them play the rest of the the last eight and a half mil off his contract. Let them do it. If you don't want to eat some of the money, you don't think there's a suitor, then okay. But if you really want to improve 25 to 30 games, this rotation has to get a lot better than Cole Reagans, Brady Singer, and Jordan Louds. And I mean a lot better. That's just where I'm at with it. I know there's people that are Jordan Louds defenders. I know there's guys that have made really good arguments for it. I'm not saying they're dumb arguments. Like if you throw 180 innings, that is valuable. But if you have the numbers that Jordan Louds had, I don't believe that it's necessary to get those 180 again with those numbers. I think you can find 180 elsewhere, cheaper and more productive. But again, that's just one man's opinion here. You have different thoughts, let us know on YouTube. Let us know on Twitter. You can just, of course, go to our YouTube page or you can go to my Twitter handle 
at Johnny J underscore 15. That's at J O H N Y J underscore one five. The last thing we're going to talk about is my confidence level and the Royals making moves this off season, but not just the big ones. I'm talking about the smaller ones that may go unnoticed until midway through the 2024 season. That's coming up on Locked On Royals. You are tuned into Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. You can follow me on Twitter at Johnny J underscore 15. That's at J O H N Y J underscore 15. Before we go any further and talk about the confidence level in this front office to make some key moves in the offseason, let's give a shout out to the other title sponsor today in FanDuel. Snap into the NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options that include spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. I think it's very entertaining that the Royals kind of have this bare cupboard, if you will. Uh, There's some key pieces there. You know, if you're talking about a pantry, there's some good food items there. There's some good snacks. But it's still a pretty bare cupboard. And it reminds me of when you have to go to the store. There are necessities and there are things that you just kind of use as your cheat meal, if you will. You know, I love zebra cakes. It feels weird I'm even mentioning zebra cakes in a baseball podcast. But I love zebra cakes. Okay, are zebra cakes a necessity? No, and they're actually not very good for you. And that, to me, is kind of how an overspending uh, decision would be for the Royals this year. What I mean by that is like what the, the Tigers did with Javi Baez. Glamorous on the surface. Oh, it's, man, you just got Javi Baez. But is it really good for you long term? Not really. You know, but it shows that you're willing to compete. You know, so I think if the Royals go out there and give a corner outfield bat or a middle of the lineup bat, a three or four year deal, that's it, a zebra cake. You know, zebra cakes are are good. They're fun. They taste good. But at the end of the day, do they really make you better long term? Do they give you better health long term? They don't. Then there's necessities. Okay, things you have to have. Of you have to have, you know, in terms of a meal to to stay in shape. Well, the truth says staying in shape. You need proteins. You need vegetables. Okay, you need stuff that goes together for a healthy meal. You need necessities for that. The bullpen's the necessity. Okay, uh, I would say getting at least one big name star of that rotation a necessity. The glamour part of it is signing, you know, a sexy name player. Signing somebody that everybody goes, wow, do you see the Royals just gave that amount of money to that player? No, I don't have the free agent sheet in front of me, but uh, let's say, you know, a Clayton Kershaw. I know I just said to sign a pitcher, but as your number one feels very unlikely. But if the Royals gave him an aging Clayton Kershaw, like three-year deal and worth well over like 18 million, zebra cake deal. Maybe we can trademark something like that. But that's how I'm looking at this offseason. The the necessities, what you may be reaching for a little bit, but you're going to the store with things that you need. And I'm starting to build a little bit more confidence that this front office can go to the store and start looking for things that are really good for you that maybe nobody's really talking about. Do you ever have friends like that, coworkers like that? They have this new drink, this new sauce, this new food, this new a packaged item that, oh, have you ever heard about this? Actually really good for you. And that ends up tasting really good. You know, that to me is kind of what we saw with Cole Reagan's, James MacArthur, Nelson Velasquez. Was looking where maybe nobody else was. And in return, they got really good value. And it was cheap, which makes it even better when you go to the store. That type of stuff is cheap. And now I'm starting to have more confidence that the Royals can go into this offseason rebuilding that bullpen, rebuilding that rotation a little bit, but looking maybe where nobody else is. 
because now they've got a little bit of a success rate and going out and getting guys like James MacArthur and only giving up a long shot 19 year old rookie ball prospect. How you can get in a role this Chapman and think a few steps ahead and go, man, he has a really good 30 innings. We can flip him some somebody that we really, really like. That to me is important. So I tweeted this out and I'm going to stick with it. You know, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong if I'm going to stick my neck out there for you. Actually, don't prove me wrong because then I would look kind of stupid as well. But with this offseason and J.J. Bacola, I've seen you make moves now that make a ton of sense now. Can you do that three more times in the offseason? Can you do it four? Can you only do it once? You know, I just have a little bit more confidence in J.J. than I ever did in Dayton Moore making some moves. You know, if, if J.J. Bacola's first signing this offseason is, is very similar to a Jordan Lyles type move or a Zach Greinke type move, I would say I'm losing that confidence. But if he goes out there and signs somebody that maybe I don't recognize the name of, you know, just on the surface, I'm going, man, I've never heard of that guy. Just like James MacArthur. You know, if it's a 24-year-old double-A guy. But then we see, hmm, spin rate's pretty good. Oh, he's a sinker ball. Oh, he throws that sinker 98 miles. An hour. Oh, he could fit in this bullpen. That's what I'm excited to see. Much more so on the pitching side than the hitting side because it's, it's harder to find that. You know, Nelson Velasquez still has a lot to prove. But pitching, you can find a lot of guys where nobody's really looking. Because we're going to go into this offseason. It's going to be the Shohei Otani sweepstakes. You know, all the big name arms are going to get mega deals. The Royals aren't going to be in on those guys. They can find guys on minor league deals, one-year deals. They can make minor league trades. They can make trades at the big league level for minor league guys that are on the cusp. Like, all these things can really bolster this team. And that's what I'm excited to see. The reason is, if they can prove that those three additions this season were not flukes, I think you can speed up that timeline of postseason baseball, which I watched a lot of today. And holy hell, I miss watch watching postseason baseball in Kansas City. You can speed up this timeline if you can show the baseball world there are some bright minds in Kansas City. You really can. If you can't show anything outside those three success stories or those guys regress severely in 2024, then we got a problem again. It's back to ground zero. It's back to the basement floor, below the basement floor, in fact. And that's why I'm excited to see it, because I think a lot of moves are coming. Now, I'm not going to abandon my idea that I think they spend a good chunk of money, maybe more money than they had in the past, and nothing said today really gives me any confidence in that, but I'm still going to hold out hope for that. What I can say with 100% certainty is they're going to be active with that bullpen. And the best way to build a bullpen is looking for guys where nobody else is looking. You don't need to give a, a bullpen arm a three-year deal. You give a lot of these guys one-year deals. If they pitch really well, you flip them. Or if they're a young guy in a rookie deal, you keep them. But you continue to turn out more and more arms, and that's going to help you along in this rebuild. If the Royals can bring in talent when they basically have one superstar talent on their roster – that's showing me more Moneyball Oakland A's. That's showing me more Tampa Bay Rays baseball. Maybe you're not as high on them because they just lost the day to the Rangers who spent a lot of money. But we do know the Rays are always in contention and those Moneyball A's were always in contention. If the Royals take that path, I'm not going to complain too much about it. That to me would make a lot of sense for this team. If you're looking where nobody else is, I'm going to gain more and more confidence in J.J. Piccolo in this front office. That's going to do it for another edition of Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. I've been your host, Jack Johnson. You can always follow me on Twitter at JohnnyJ underscore 15 and catch all these podcasting episodes on where you get your podcasts. That can be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and find us on YouTube at about 530 subscribers now. Let's get that number up to 600 by the end of October. So see this video, like it, share it, and continue to hit that red button, that subscribe button on YouTube. But until tomorrow, you take it easy, Kansas City.